Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to talk about light mixing, the new light mixing node in Octane 2021 that sort of uh, dovetails into its new compositing features. So this is sort of a first dip into the compositing features of Octane 2021. I'll probably do another video on it, um, features other than light mixing. And uh, this revolves around setting light IDs for your area lights, since we've got a couple area lights here, these two right here, and also light IDs on your polygon lights if you're using them, or emissive polygons, right? So I've got a reflector image here, an HDR reflector image, that's an emissive texture on that polygon. This polygon has a softbox, that's an HDR uh, scan that's going to be, you know, lighting my scene there. And in order to do light mixing, I need to set light IDs on all my lights. So if I just sort of isolate these, I'll just kind of turn off everything but this top light in the item list. And so on your lights, like this classic area light here, you're going to have an octane uh, drop down here in Moto and your item properties. Obviously, if you're using something other than Moto, it's going to be someplace else. But same concept. You have to set light IDs. So the light pass ID is always going to default to ones. So they're all treated as the same light pass. And uh, that can be advantageous if you have something like a bunch of Christmas lights or something. You probably want all the lights to be, you, well, you might want all the lights to be ones. So you can control them all at once under the same uh, light pass in uh, the compositing options. But in this case, you want to give different IDs to every single light. So I'm going to keep this one at one. And this side light here, this other area light, I'm going to change to two. And then if I turn that off and go to my, uh, my soft box here, um, I'm not going to have a light ID pass and item properties I actually need to go to the emissive texture. So I'm going to just jump over the schematic and select my key pass override here. And so here's my override and here is my emissive node going into the emission slot on the material. And this has a light ID pass or light pass ID right here. So I just call that three. And then the last one, of course, is that reflector, which I'll just do while I'm here in the schematic. And we'll call that one four. So I've got four different light pass IDs now for each of my lights. Now what I need to do is set up my light mixing and I'm going to select my render item here and in channels, um, I'm going to do a quick search for AOV and you'll see these two channels here, which is the AOV output group and render AOV group. And I'm just gonna go, we'll just do a new workspace. I'll just call this light mixing. You can do it in whatever workspace you want to really, but I'll make a new one in Moto. And let me just clear out my, uh, oops, actually, let me do this again, AOV. So you're gonna grab these two channels and drag them into your workspace, right? And so we're gonna add some octane nodes now. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up our render AOV group. These are the different groups or render passes that are gonna be actually rendered in octane. So tagged as we want these to be rendered and spit out to the separate passes. They'll show up down here in this pass dropdown. And um, then we're going to take those passes and we're going to composite them together. But if the passes don't exist, we can't composite them. So the first thing we have to do is set up our passes. So we're going to do new render, render AOV group, which is just right at the top. And that's going to plug in to our render AOV group uh, slot there, pin there in the uh, render node. And then I need to, I've got these eight slots here. And so I'm going to start adding some AOV groups. And so the ones I want are white groups. So new render AOV. Go down here to white AOV, that's what we want. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna ask me which one. So I'll just do the first one here. Now here I don't have any ambient light or any sunlight. Actually the um, environment is just set to black. So, uh, but you can actually incorporate that as well. And so we'll just do the light ID one here and AOV one. Now it should appear down here. So there is, if I actually turn on all my lights, you can see there's that top light there, right? That's that light ID one. So there's our beauty pass, all lights on. And then there's our light ID one, just that top one. So you can actually just duplicate these here and we'll just call this one two, plug it into two, duplicate again, plug it into three, call it three, and one more time. And now we've got all of our light IDs uh, set up down here as passes, right? So here's our reflector, here's our key uh, softbox, here's our side light, and here's our top light. All right, looking good so far. So we've got all these set up, the rendering. And what's interesting about this method of compositing is and it's, and it's kind of it's kind of weird to wrap your head around at first, but it's rendering right now, right? Well, just finished, then we set it to 512 samples. But you're, you're, you don't have to wait till your render's done to start compositing. So if I set this to like 2048, it'll just keep on, you know, 
keep on keeping on here and start adding samples to this render, I can just start setting up my compositing right now while it's rendering. I don't have to wait till it's done rendering. So I've got another um, AOV output group, and this is where we're going to set up our compositing. So we use a new compositor, and we want a new AOV output group, just like we had down here, render output group. So we have that here, and we have eight slots. And I guess the best way to think of this is, think of this as if you're an After Effects user, let's consider this your After Effects project, and each of these is an After Effects composition. <laughs> so you can have multiple sort of compositions in this one output group here. And so... So let me come over here to my new compositor uh, nodes and find this light mixer AOV output right here. And then this is going to have, you know, one slot. You know, we've got all eight of our light IDs there. And I'm going to plug it into input one right here. Now that it's plugged in, it's going to show up down here in our passes output AOV one right there. And right now it's black because we haven't enabled anything. So, you know, sunlight and ambient light, we don't actually have uh, any of that in the scene right now, so I don't need those on. Um, the imager being enabled will enable your response curve and your denoising, so you want that on, most likely. And I'm gonna turn on my output groups there now, right? So I'm gonna, there's my top light, and the uh, light two, ID two is my side light, and then I had my softbox, and then I have my reflector, the last one right there. And now I can go in here and start doing some light mixing. So right off the bat, um, this side group here, let me actually just turn off, um, uh, let me actually go to a little bit of a closer shot here. So this is just a closer camera view of our of our bug. This is a, actually, I think this is a tiger beetle. I have got the scientific name is on there, but I think that's a tiger beetle. <laughs> and the credits below in the in the description, this is off of uh, Sketchfab, uh, scanned image off, or scanned bug off of Sketchfab, which makes pretty cool subject. And if I turn off my softbox and my reflector here, you see some fairly dramatic light, right? These are the two area lights right here, sort of a dramatic side light and top light. And then if I turn those guys off, I've got my reflector and my uh, softbox, but no real backlight. So in this particular one, I may want to just do, let's say we, we want to skip out on the side light right now, which is just sort of blowing everything out. It's way too strong. There's no real contrast. It's not very dramatic. So I'm going to just turn that off completely. Or I can even turn it on and just turn the scale down to like 0.1 or something. So it's just down a little bit. And I'm going to turn on my top light right here. And I'm going to actually bump that up a little bit to get a little more uh, harsh light on the top of the shell there. Maybe even a 2 and get sort of a harsher light there. And you can also tint the colors. One of the reasons I kept all the colors uh, white on my area lights here is they're white. And didn't and chose just um, sort of, you know, non-colored images for my HDR images. Let me see if I can just pop open my image group here and show you the HDR images real quick. So there's my softbox, right? It's just, it's, there's really no color in it. Same with my reflector. Um, this is my reflector. That's a different softbox. Here's my reflector. And so, you know, the reason I'm doing it is because I can add color in the light mixer. You can actually tint color. So this uh, area light on the top that's giving us this uh, harsh sort of white light there. And in fact, again, you can isolate it over here by just by turning these off because that's my light ID one. If I want to tint that a little bit, maybe we tint this a bit of a, a warmer light maybe. So we've got my tint in here, light ID one tint. And so let's tint this a little bit of a warmer color and just drag this way. You can see it sort of tinting sort of a warmer color on top, which I like. And then let's turn on uh, my side light uh, in this particular one. Actually, I'm just gonna turn it off completely and turn on my uh, reflector over there, which I think is enough light on that side and turn on my uh, main um, uh, softbox on the left-hand side. It's kind of the key light. Now, let me tint that now. The key light is Light ID 3, I believe. So right here, Light ID 3 tint. And we'll make this one a little bit warm as well. So we're just warming this side up a little bit. And then I think I'm going to bring in just some contrasting cool light from my reflector on this side. So let's go to my reflector, which is Light ID 4 tint right here. Might actually be easier to see where these go if I move them down. It's Light ID 4 tint. Let's go with a bit of a bluish cool light on this side here like this. And actually, I'm going to bump that up a little bit. Let me just see what that, um, oh, I don't have it on. There we go. Now you can see it, right? There's the blue. I may even bump that up. If I bump that up, you can see that blue kind of coming in. So even drag that up a little bit and make the blue a little, a little darker even. 
kind of like that. I actually like that blue giving some color, almost like you know, a bit of a sheen on the uh, underside of the carapace there. So, so there we go. So there's, you know, uh, if I go up to my, just my beauty, you can see the difference, right? That's super kind of blown out with all the lights at full strength. It's just, it's all white light, just pretty boring shot. But if you go down here, way cooler shot, right? Way more interesting shot. And I may even bump up my intensity on Light ID 3, my uh, softbox, a little bit just to get a little more light on there. But, you know, looks pretty cool. So if we want something a little more dramatic, let's just, you know, take this and move it up here and let's add another light mixing group to Light Mix 2. So let me just come over here to my new compositor, get another light mixer, a uh, bunch of channels here, sort of shuffle it off to the side and plug this in. You kind of hover over um, the node moto, you know, it sort of it magnifies to so make sure you plug in the right thing. So I got it plugged in and then we'll see it down here. It's going to be black because we haven't enabled anything. And this one, let's enable the two area lights. So let's do one and two. Now we've got some sort of uh, dramatic lighting going on here. And let's do some different um, colors here. So maybe we'll make this one. Let's make this since it's dramatic. Let's make this and let's make this uh, the evil tiger beetle and get some uh, different colors going on here. So why don't we get light ID two is going to be our um, side light. So why don't we tint this red? Danger, Will Robinson. So it's scary bug. We'll get that going on there. Really red, Darth Vader bug almost. Um, Sith bug. And then for the top one, I'm actually gonna. Let's bump up our intensity here quite a bit on this top light. Really make it kind of intense like this. I wonder, since we have Imager enabled here, it'll probably, I'm guessing, um, pass on the exposure value. At least I would think so. So let's go to our Imager. And if I want to turn down my exposure, you should, yeah, it did actually work. So I point this see if this works here. Yeah, so it will actually capture the exposure value if you want to play with your exposure there a little bit. Maybe let's go 0.85. Um, just don't want to lose all our detail here, but I like this sort of harsh dramatic lighting with this uh, bug. And I think I'll maybe I'll just, uh, yeah, let's, eh, let's see, maybe we'll tint that one a little bit red too, but not quite as much. Maybe something like that. There we go. Sith bug. So, okay, there's a whole nother sort of uh, look to it, right? And, you know, if we want to bring in a little light here, we can turn on our softbox, which is number three, but we'll just turn it way down. So maybe 0.1 or so, and let's give it maybe a bit of a purplish uh, tint there. Like, uh, I'm sorry, it's number three tint. So we'll tint it sort of purpley, maybe something like, like so. A little bit of a purple look there. So yeah, all right, I like that one. I like that one. Two very different looks, both dramatically different than that one. And like I said, this is just doing it. I can, like, again, I can crank up the um, the samples and just keep working on this while it's rendering. And you start to see the power of that because like I'm telling you, I've got a 3090 in here, so obviously it's fairly fast, a lot of RAM. But you gotta like put this in context. They're laying the groundwork here for compositing, and there's not a lot of compositing nodes right now. There's there's not a it's not nuke by any means. But you see where this is going. There's no reason you can't start your compositing while your image is rendering. And by the time, you know, if I wanted to crank this up to, you know, ten thousand samplers or whatever, have a large image. Um, you know, by the time I could be done with half a dozen different light passes by the time this is done rendering and just spit them all out. So when you save your image, you can either, um, you can save as, you know, each image individually as ping 16s, or you should be able to do a, a layered EXR32, I believe, that will save all of them. Yeah, multi-layer, so you could do that. Actually, if you do multi-layer discrete files and you set it to um, set it to ping, it should save out a separate ping for every single image. So, so there you go. That's your first look at light mixing. I'm going to do another video on light linking. So if you want to check out light linking, linking lights to meshes and only meshes being linked to a light, you know, lights only affecting that mesh that it is linked to, that'll be in that video. Yum, yum.